Howdy y'all. Today we're going to be making a hollow glass circle out of hollow straight tubing in borosilicate glass. As always, there's a bunch of different ways to do the same thing, but I'm just showing you one of those ways. The first thing we're going to do is select the size of circle we want to create, which is 2.25 or 2 and a quarter inches in diameter. It's important to select the size that you want so you know how much tubing you're going to need. So what we're looking for is the length of the tubing you'll need, which will be your diameter times pi equals circumference. So 2.25 times 3.14 equals 7.065. So here I have a seven inch long piece of tubing that I have pulled from a larger piece of tubing. Now, that being said, it is a encased piece of dichro tubing that has a clear sleeve, which will cause a visual imperfection later on. It's not a big deal. It's something that you can manage but just wanted to say that uh, up front. So here what I'm doing is I am heating across a large section of the middle portion of the tubing and I'm sinking in the heat into the wallway, bringing it down to my kiln shelf and then making my very first bend. Now, when I am bending, I'm also holding pressure in my tube. I'm not blowing really hard, I'm just holding the pressure steady with my breath. I don't want the walls to collapse. Um, so because of that, I'm giving a little bit of pressure, but not so much as blowing it out. I'm just holding the walls steady. Now that I've made one quarter of my circle, I'm now going to pop a hole and I'm going to attach a hollow tube to the end, a handle, so that then I can start beginning to bend the other sections forward and around to complete my circle. Like I said before, there is a lot of different ways to make hollow circles. This is just how I prefer to do it. I like to pre-bend the first quarter section of the circle so that then I can just work around it and manipulate the other ends till they come and meet each other at the very end of the circle. So essentially I'm giving myself not quite a halfway point, but a area designated uh, that's not going to be moving, not going to be shifting, and not going to be changing anymore. It's going to be a solid foundation for the rest of my circle. So it's here I realize I have no pressure in my tube because I have left the other handle open. So I have a blow tube on one handle and I'm taking a foam earplug and placing it in the other side of the open handle so that I can keep pressure within my vessel. They're super cheap, very accessible. You can get hundreds of them for like 10 bucks. I use them all the time. They are my favorite way to plug handles. So what you're gonna see me do is just incrementally and very slowly start to round out this tubing. Now you can see my hand is moving back towards my body. I'm not pulling on this piece of tubing. I'm just very slowly shifting the wall. I am just allowing it to naturally move as it normally would in these smaller sections and I'm not causing any type of disruption on the wall by pushing or pulling but just slightly adjusting and it's perfectly fine to tinker with and to play with moving this piece of tubing in a circle moving it around um, you know it's better to go slowly than to move too quickly and lose your entire project. Uh, the slower, the steadier, and the better. But once you become more confident and competent in how to move the tubing, smaller, I'm sorry, larger incremental bins can be very obtainable. I, for this video, wanted to make sure that what we did was more incremental and smaller movements, just to show you how easy it can be when you first start attempting this technique. It is at this point that my camera cut off because I had too much storage on my phone, but essentially the only thing I did was I popped holes on both ends of my tubing so that I can then connect them in the middle. So like I said at the beginning of this video, this is a piece of sleeve tubing, which means that there is clear on either side. Um, normally, what I could do for a circle is if it was just one color with no sleeve and I had an extra of that color, like let's say in a rod 
what I could do is I could just take a rod, a stringer, and just fill in that gap and then heat it up, blow it out, and it would be a perfect little tube. Another way I could have achieved this would be to pop those holes open and have them at an angle in which when they met, it would make a perfect slice, but that can be more difficult to achieve. And also I could have done a Jesus seal, which would have been even more difficult to achieve, especially with this type of tubing. So what I decided to do instead is to take my tweezers and to heat up the areas where I had just reamed open, pull them together, closed them on both sides by pulling them down and touching them at the lips, and then heating up and then fully closing off that piece of tubing. That being said, the wall weight where I have pulled that glass down with my tweezers is now going to be thinner than the wall weight of the rest of the tube. So because of this, what I'm going to do is borrow the weight of the tubing that is surrounding the area that we just joined together. To do that, what I'm going to do is heat up the section that is the area I want the glass to flow to, and then I will move back down the tube on either side and start to gather the weight of that wall from a thicker portion and start encouraging it to flow down to that thinner portion. Whatever portion of glass is the hottest is where the glass will flow. So I go up and back into the thicker portion of the wall weight and then bring that glass down to that connection point that we made to close off the piece of tubing. And while I'm doing this, I'm keeping pressure in that tubing to make sure the connection point is not closing off and that the wall weight isn't getting super funky anywhere. Now, what you are gonna wanna do is to check it on every side, up, down, and all the way around. That's just going to ensure that not one portion of the wall is getting thinner than another portion. So what I have here now is a pretty decent circle, but she's not looking the best. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start incrementally moving that tubing around to finalize the shape of my circle. And this is pretty common when you make circles this small. When you make larger circles around the size of, you know, six, eight, 10, 12 inches, you know, in diameter, it's a lot easier to make something that is less tightly wound. So this is a very tight circle. You are able to very quickly visually see the imperfections of this tubing, or I'm sorry, of this circle. So what I need to do is I need to go back through, I need to smooth out the interior of the circle and the exterior. And when I do that, I need to make sure that the wall weight is even around the entirety of the circle on every surface, every uh, face of the surface. So you could think of it as north, east, south, and west for your piece of tubing. To adjust this circle, all I'm using on the inside is this rounded graphite bowl push. And on the outside, I'm using my marver pad. What I really enjoy about graphite tools is that graphite allows the heat to begin to diffuse out of the wall while still holding it in place on the outside, but allowing the inside to still move. So if I have any bumps, if I have any ripples, if I have any distortions of wall weight, I can hold it steady on the outside while then still using my breath by blowing into my tube to then even out the inside. I can also do micro adjustments with the rounded off bowl push. I can go in and start to smooth off any imperfections, lightly push up and away. I don't wanna drag anything. I want to lightly tap. I want to lightly smooth, but I don't wanna push hard on anything because that, all that's gonna do is create more distortion in the glass. What I'm really trying to do is encourage it to naturally fall down or naturally sag uh, so that it complements the other existing areas around it. Another thing I like to do is to take my graphite paddle and I like to heat up a section. And then what I'll do is I'll just move it from the top 
and I'll swivel it around to the side and then to the other side. And I'm just kind of moving in almost a circular motion, allowing the heat to rise in that tube, holding the exterior wall weight steady, and then pressing air up into it. And now what I have is a beautiful circle and she's all finished. So this has been the demo on how to make hollow circles. Thanks for coming along. If you have any questions, just drop them below and I'll answer them to the best of my abilities. Thank you so much, guys.